Hello, and welcome back to Gone Electric. Last week, I made a video about eNode, a better route planner's new hardwareless mechanism for connecting your EV's computer to a better route planner in hopes of making route planning a little bit more accurate, and hopefully instilling a little bit more confidence when you're out on the road and you don't have a Tesla. But see, that's just the thing. I didn't get to test the accuracy of eNode in that video. So today's video is going to do just that. We're going to test the accuracy of eNode when it comes to route planning within a better route planner. I'm going to take you from Long Beach, California to Las Vegas. And if you can, stick with me to the very end because the data is very interesting and quite capable. We have needed a road trip for the longest time, so I'm pretty excited to get started here. All right, let's wake up the car, see where our state of charge is at. Then we're gonna plug in our destination to a better out planner. And there's the car waking up. The one thing with ID4 is that it does have a little bit of a delay in terms of how long it takes to wake up. So it is welcoming me. Thank you so much. Let's activate CarPlay. Okay, so CarPlay has finally turned over. And let's uh, check the state of charge of the car. We're at 100%, so we were able to trickle charge overnight all the way up to 100. Um, I'm seeing something interesting. This is new. My uh, Estimated range at 100% state of charge is 313 miles. That is the first time I've ever breached 300 miles on a full charge. I'm not sure if that has to do with the recent over-the-air update, which kind of doesn't make sense temporally because that was a couple months ago. It might be that I've been driving with increased efficiency. As you can see to the right there, I'm driving at about a 4.4 mile per kilowatt hour efficiency. And that is a little higher than I normally do. I have not done the math. This is kind of napkin math, but that actually might work out to three, a 313 mile range. But it is kind of exciting to see the 313 uh, mile estimated range. It's kind of nice to see anything over 300. I've never seen it before. But as is always the case, this is without the air conditioner on. So let's see what happens to the estimated range once I turn the AC on. Let's max it out because it's a hot freaking day today. And boom, from 313 to a still not bad, but a, a big a precipitous drop from 313 to 272 in terms of estimated range here at 100%. Now, we're going to probably leave the AC on for a majority of this drive because we're going out to Vegas and it's going to be blazingly hot. So, um, and I will mention one thing that you just saw a big drop in range once I turned on the air conditioner, but that's something that happens even with gas cars. So you, know, you hear a lot, you hear about that a lot with EVs that the AC really does um, pull down your, your estimated range. But that happens with gas cars too. You just don't hear about it as much. Okay, so let's do this. Um, I'm gonna open up a better route planner so that I can plug in our destination for our little road trip today, which is to Vegas. We're going to the Encore Hotel. Um, and the goal of today's video is to test out how accurately a better route planner can route plan our trip to Vegas with eNode, because we are still connected to eNode. If you watched my video from a couple days ago, I will uh, have it in the description box if you haven't seen it. So you can take a look at what eNode is, how it connects, and um, how potentially powerful it is as a live data feed for route planning in a better route planner. So let's plug into a better route planner, see if eNode's still connected, and then let's, uh, let's plan our trip and see how accurate eNode is. Okay, so we're now opening a better route planner. There we go. Let's pull up the menu, and you can see right there, the word connected is illuminated in green. That means we are connected to eNode still, which is great, and it looks like it is showing an accurate depiction of our state of charge at 100%. So let's plug in the Encore in Vegas and let's tap plan. And let's see what a better route planner with the help of eNode says our trip will look like. Okay, and there it is. That kind of took a while to, to populate, but basically it says we're gonna have a four and a half hour drive over 278 miles. Um, it looks like we're gonna have one charge and it's gonna be in Baker, California, which is a 12 stall charging station, which is kind of nice that a better route planner does that now. It shows you how many stalls you can expect. It also shows you the rating of the uh, charging station itself. And Baker is a good one, 4.7. It's a fairly new one too, which is nice. So we're starting at 100%. We're gonna drive 187 miles out to Baker. And once we get to Baker, 
it's saying that our state of charge will get will uh, be at 18% on arrival. And if we charge to 60% in Baker, it should take about 15 or so minutes. That'll be enough to get to our destination, which is the Encore. And when we get to the Encore, it's saying that we'll be, we will be at 20%, which is about what I'd like. All right, so let's tap drive. And uh, that's what you immediately see is you, as soon as you activate that route, you get a whole nice data, data uh, display, which is really, really nice. I like to see this. It shows you your, uh, your first destination, which for us is going to be Baker, California. It's a 188 mile drive out to Baker. It's saying that we're going to arrive there at about 141. And it says that, you know, if we start at 100%, by the time we get to Baker, we'll be at 18%. Uh, on the bottom, it shows you the odometer, your current state of charge, and where you're currently parked. Um, let's see if we tap settings. You can bring yourself back to your menu of settings really, really easily. Now, um, let's see what it what this looks like on the infotainment system. So here we've got a Better Route Planner up on the infotainment system. Again, you you can only get a Better Route Planner to work on your car on your car play on your infotainment system if you pay for premium. And if you're going to pay for premium, you might what might as well connect to Enode. So um, here's how you know it's connected to Enode. You can see my state of charge right up there. Oh, well, I don't know why I did that with my fingers ruined the video, but that's fine. You can see in the top right, my state of charge reads out at 100%. And it's saying that at the, my destination, my state of charge will be at 18%. Um, I, I will say this, I really like the mapping service that a Better Route Planner is using. I'm wondering if it has anything to do with Rivian purchasing a Better Route Planner, because this is a nice map. It isn't, it isn't Google Maps, it isn't quite Apple Maps either. It's something in between and I like it. It's super high def. Really like the color contrast. You can switch the uh, color contrast to like a day or a dark mode. Um, I always like dark. It's just easier for my um, aging eyes. You can see down here our arrival time, um, the amount of time it'll take, and then the mileage to get there. Okay, so let's get going. And our next stop, when I check in, we will be hopefully at Baker, California, about to charge. And the goal is that as we pull up, we're gonna try to see how accurate Enode is in estimating our arrival state of charge in Baker. It says I'll be at 18%. Let's see how accurate it is. All right, let's go. Two hours and 45 minutes later, we have arrived at the Baker Electrify America station. Um, it's a 12 stall. And it's got a big Tesla supercharger. So um, we're going to plug in, see if we can get a successful charge going. And then we can look at uh, some numbers from the first leg of our trip here. See how accurate a better route planner has been on this first leg. And I'll catch up to you in a second. All right, so we were able to find an open stall. We are at stall number nine. And as I like to do, I like to activate the charge before I actually step outside. So again... We are in Electrify America's app. We've just signed in, and there is Baker right there. I'm gonna tap on the little pin for Baker. It says nine of 12 chargers are available. That is accurate. It's us and two other people here. I'm gonna scroll up till I find stall number nine. It's a 350 kilowatt charger. That's okay. They're all 350 here, which is kind of cool. So we're gonna tap on stall number nine, and then down there at the bottom, it says swipe to charge, and guess what? We're going to swipe to charge. It says initiating charging. So that means we gotta go outside and it wants us to plug in. We're gonna do that. And of course I forgot to take the CCS flap off. The machine says it's connecting to the vehicle. All right, and it has connected. We are currently charging at a speed of 130 kilowatt. We're gonna call that a win. That is pretty close to our max charge rate of 135 kilowatt. We're at 30%. Now, a better route planner wanted us to charge to 60% in order to get to the hotel. We're going to go to 80 because we have more driving to do around the hotel than I thought. Uh, so we need a little bit more juice left in the tank. All right, so it looks like we're off to a good start here in Baker. Let's check some numbers from that first leg of our trip. See how accurate Enode with a better route planner was. It predicted that we would be at 18% state of charge. In reality, we were at 30%, which is, um, which means that its initial projection wasn't accurate. But the interesting thing is that I saw as I was driving that projected arrival state of charge was changing. 
And lucky for us, it actually increased. So we we made it here with some extra charge in the tank. Um, and you know you can see it changing in real time with traffic and with weather especially, and with its communication with my car's uh, computer itself. So far, I'm a big fan of eNode. Big fan of a better route planner because it does seem to make things a little more accurate. And I really like the real-time adjustments, especially at work when it works out on your side. Just to see our stats from that first leg, we went 187 miles, average speed of about 59 miles per hour. It took us three hours and 12 minutes. And interestingly here, my efficiency was 3.9 miles per kilowatt hour. That is higher than it usually is. So that would impute about a 300 mile range if I were to drive my car from 100% charge to 0% charge with that efficiency, which is really great because it seems that I'm getting a little bit better efficiency than I usually get. It could just be today, it could be the wind or the weather, um, but I'm always happy when I'm getting near 300, 300 mile projected range. So here's what a better route planner looks like in premium version when you're connected to eNode as you're charging, this is what your infotainment system will look like. You got a nice battery over here. It says that I've been charging for eight minutes. It wants me to charge to 60% in order to get to our ultimate destination in Vegas. You can see right here, a live readout of my state of charge. It really is a bit behind. It says 41% as I'm charging. My real-time state of charge is actually 47%. It wants us to charge to 60. Again, we're gonna go to 80. Now that is one thing that I did notice about eNode's connection to my car's computers that there seemed to be at about a, a one to two minute lag. So I saw that when my state of charge dropped in my car, it took about a minute, sometimes two minutes for the state of charge to drop on eNode on the screen here. Not a super big deal, but it is, it is just a thing to know. Okay, just as a quick timeout, I wish that at this point in the video, I had remembered to show you what eNode looks like inside a Better Route Planner app while you're charging, not just on the infotainment system. But for whatever reason, I just forgot to do that. So at a later charger, I went into the a Better Route Planner app and I recorded for you what eNode does look like while you're charging. Here's how to do it. So right in the center there, you can see that my car is at 62% state of charge, charging at 71 kilowatts currently. If I tap on that panel, it'll bring me to this screen. Then I'm gonna tap on live data and it's gonna produce a graph which is kind of cool. This has two Y axes on the left that's showing state of charge as I'm charging, and you can see it in purple increasing. And on the right hand side, the other Y axis is showing charge speed. You can see it dropping in green as I'm charging. At the bottom there, you can see state of charge 62%, power 71, 71 kilowatt. What I also like is that when you're done charging in accordance with what a better out planner thinks you should charge at to make your next stop, it'll give you this uh, planned charging completed celebration screen. You can see it wanted me to charge 58%. I actually got to 65%. Um, I got a little greedy. So it shows you some other things like it shows you your next leg, where you're going to charge next. It shows you the time you'll get there, how long it'll take to get there, and how many miles. It also shows you how to find an alternative charger. And if we tap that, it brings you to this screen. It'll show you uh, how long it takes to get to the next charger. It'll show you your arrival time. It'll show you uh, the trip distance. A lot of uh, really helpful stuff. And now back to the main video. All right, so we finished a successful charge out here in Baker. I have to say, if every charge went like this, everybody would be owning EVs. This was super successful. And I have to say that this Baker charging stop is a good one. 12 stalls, they all seem to be in working order. And they even have Jersey mics here so that we were able to fuel up. And I think Emily hates me a little less now that I've eaten, which is always exciting. So we charged for 26 minutes here. We went from a state of charge of 30% to 80%. We are now ready to hit the road to go to our final destination in Vegas. So I'm going to plug in our hotel once again, starting from here in Baker. We'll see what a better route planner says our state of charge should be at arrival should be interesting. We're going to the Encore. You can see that we're still connected via eNode, and so it's correctly reading out that we're going to start here leaving the Baker Station with a state of charge of 80%. So we're going to tap Plan, and it says we're going to have no charges. That's great. So we've got 90 miles to go to Vegas. We're starting at a state of charge of 80%, and it is projecting we're going to arrive at the hotel with a state of charge of 40%. So we're going to start on our last leg here to the hotel, and then I'll catch up to you when we get there so we can see where our state of charge ended up being at arrival.
Mm. All right, and we made it 90 miles later and an hour and a half later to the Encore in Las Vegas. And uh, I'm gonna show you some data that's pretty impressive on the part of Enode. Well, there you have it, folks. On the top right, you will see that my state of charge is 43%, as indicated by Enode's connection to my car. And Enode's predicted arrival state of charge was 40% and we arrived at 43%. So it was three percentage points off, but in our favor, a little bit more energy in the battery left than it indicated, I will take that. All in all, I'm very impressed with Enode and I'm really impressed with the Better Route Planner's ability to route plan very accurately. It indicated that we would finish our first leg at 18% state of charge. We ended up with 30% state of charge left. So we actually were left with 60% more battery energy than indicated by a better route planner. And on the leg here from the Baker Electrify America to the Encore in Las Vegas, it was off by three percentage points. It said we'd arrive at 40%, we arrived at 43%. The one thing I will say is I did drive the exact speed limit the entire time to make this as accurate as I possibly could. So um, in reality, that is probably not gonna be a thing I do very often. It was very hard to adhere to the speed limit. I don't like getting past. All right, I'm gonna wrap this video up by passing it to future Evan. Future Evan. No. Uh -huh. Man, I really don't like those two guys. Look, before you go, I wanna show you one last really cool thing that Enode allows you to do within a better route planner. If you wanna retroactively look at data from past drives and charges, you can do that. And here's how. From inside a better route planner, see where it says Volkswagen ID4 80%. You're gonna tap on that panel. It's gonna bring you to this window here where you've got options to tap for live data. We're gonna tap that. Then we're gonna scroll down and see right in the middle there where it says save my activity. We're gonna tap view all there. And it's gonna bring up a calendar that shows all of your drives and your charges for that month. Drives are in blue, chargers are in green. I'm gonna tap on uh, August 29th there to show you uh, some data that we've got. Um, I'm gonna scroll and I'm gonna tap on that drive there that was 110 miles for two hours and 28 minutes. If you do that, it brings up some nice graphical data. On the left-hand uh, y-axis, you're gonna see state of charge. On the right-hand y-axis, you're gonna see elevation. So you can kind of see how your state of charge changed throughout the drive and as elevation changed. Um, you can also see how your speed um, was influential, shown in purple there. Of course, on the x-axis, you've got time. Um, so a lot of good data. I'm gonna go back to August 29th, and I'm gonna scroll down there so I can show you, show you a charge. And I'm gonna choose that one right there, the La Quinta Grand Canyon charge that we did. You can see on the left-hand axis, uh, you've got state of charge. On the right-hand y-axis, you've got charge rate. And on the x-axis, you've got time. Now this was a 20 minute charge. You can see that that line in blue is indicating our state of charge. You can see that it increased to, to about 70%. And you can see that our charge rate indicated in green didn't really change throughout this charge. That's because we went from about 50% state of charge to about 70% and in ID4, the uh, charge curve remains pretty stable between those two states of charge. So um, this is really good stuff in my opinion to track. Um, if you're a data wonk like myself, then you will probably really like this. So all in all, Enode really was accurate and the data is great. I will mention there were some drawbacks to Enode while we were out there. Uh, firstly, three or four times it showed that we had a traffic jam as indicated by red on the infotainment system, when in reality there was no traffic. Um, a couple times it lost connectivity to the car's computer although I would say it was pretty quick to reconnect. Um, there is a delay in the ability for Enode to show changes in state of charge. So like when the car's state of charge drops a percentage point, sometimes it would take a minute or two for that to be reflected on uh, a better route planner. Um, and then it does have a tendency to like temporarily lose your data in the cloud when you try to look at retroactive data. Sometimes it's there, sometimes it's not, sometimes if you close the app and then reopen it, it reappears. We did see that a couple times. All in all though, it is great. So let me close it out. I hope you learned something or at least were entertained. And if you were, make sure to like, share, subscribe, and I will see you next time. <laughs>